The concept of dying can be a tough thing to come to terms with. The will to survive from the moment we take our first breath stays with us for most of us for our whole lives until we take our last. But why does there have to be a last breath? As the years go by, modern medicine continues to stop diseases and slow the aging process. Will there come a day when we are able to stop it altogether? I'm Danny Burke and is immortality possible? The process of aging and dying takes place on a cellular level. As our cells divide, DNA breaks down and eventually our cell death outpaces cell production. This affects our our ability to fight diseases. Ultimately, it is this wear and tear that breaks us down over time until a natural death. But some biologists disagree with the assumption that death is natural at all. We only have to look to nature for evidence of that. There are trees that are thousands of years old and seem to be just as healthy as their juvenile counterparts. The Great Basin Bristlecone Pine is the oldest individual tree on the planet, dated at over 5,000 years old. Glass sponges found in the East China Sea have been found to be over 10,000 years old. And then there's the immortal jellyfish. This nickname isn't given lightly. They stand out among all life on earth as being able to revert back to their immature stage as a polyp, thereby escaping death forever and achieving immortality. Essentially, it's like a butterfly reverting back to a caterpillar as many times as it wishes. Scientists think that stem cells, which are undifferentiated cells, are being stored and used by these organisms far more effectively than in human bodies. But the point still stands. The concept of death being a universal truth for all life does not seem as solid as we once thought. So, can humans join this long life club? Dr. Aubrey de Grey of the SENS Research Foundation once compared the human body to a machine with moving parts like a car or an aeroplane. It accumulates damage throughout life as consequences of normal operation. The SENS Research Foundation is one of many institutions that are hoping to stop aging by removing, repairing and replacing cellular damage. They say this will bring aging tissue to health and bring back the body's youthful vigour. But other scientists say that humanity's best hope in reaching immortality is not with this gene editing, but with nanobots. One such advocate is Google's director of engineering, Ray Kurzweil. He believes that by 2029, nanobots will make humans practically immortal. Nothing is impossible. These unimaginably small nanobots will attach themselves to our DNA and constantly monitor and repair it. They will travel through our bloodstreams, fighting diseases and repairing damage far better than our bodies can naturally do. They will deliver drugs and medicine to very specific parts of our body that need them. They will, in effect, replace our immune system. The human body struggles with cancer because it fails to recognize and kill the cancer cells as being a threat to the body. Nanobots will be programmed to destroy the cancer before it even gets started. All of this, Ray predicts, will mean that by the year 2029, these medical technologies will add at least one year every year to your life expectancy, effectively rendering you immortal. For others, the key to immortality is not in the body, but in the consciousness. What does it mean to live forever? Is it your body being alive, or is it you, your consciousness? Many people believe that it's futile to try and stop the physical body from aging, that we are only trying to hold back the tide of an inevitable process. Instead, we should be looking for ways to transfer our consciousness our essence, perhaps even our souls, out of our mortal bodies and into technology that can last forever. Perhaps we can then be uploaded to robotic bodies that will not be affected by any of the diseases and conditions that affect us today. Transhumanists believe this may happen as soon as 2045. This may be a two-step process. We may first have to archive and digitize a person into data and then upload them to our machine avatars. What does that mean? But no matter how good this digital copy of you is, can we truly call it you? Will not just be an artificial consciousness with your mind, memories and feelings while the real you died with your body. Some say there is no separating our physical body and brain from our consciousness. That if we want to achieve immortality, we must make our bodies immortal by exploring the techniques we discussed at the start of the video. Then there is the question of whether we should even want to be immortal at all. Some people have raised practical concerns such as overpopulation. If we are already struggling to control our numbers and distribute resources, how will we manage when hundreds of millions of people continue to live forever. The moral implications worry other people even more. Just because we may one day have the ability to become immortal, does that mean we should? What will thousands of years do to the human mind? Do we really need it? Is it truly the natural next step for humans? Or is it simply fueled by our desire to avoid that last breath from the moment we take our first? I'm Danny Burke. Thanks for watching Life's Biggest Questions, and I'll see you all in the next video.